Drew here, Frisco Tennis Shop. Just want to do a video on customization. I was going to do some customization on this Wilson 98 uh, Blade V8. Uh, this person wants to add 10 grams to the racket. I just wanted to discuss the difference or the connection between tennis static weight, the what is the actual weight of the racket, the swing weight, how heavy does it feel, and the overall balance of the rack. And I thought it would be fun to do a, a video of talking about the connection of the three and how that relates to your tennis game. And before I get started, I do wanna give a thank you to Unstrung Customs. I'm not affiliated with them, uh, but I did take their customization course and I do customization and uh, I've learned a lot by doing it myself, but by taking that course I actually uh, learned a lot and I'm gonna be using some of the measurements they talk about, I'm actually gonna take my own measurements as well of uh, the swing weight and how uh, adding weight or customizing weight to different parts of the racket, how it affects the overall playability of the racket. So uh, a thank you to them and uh, let's talk about that coming up. So in this particular case, the customer gave me this racket and I said, it feels a little bit uh, light to them. Can they, or can I add some weight to the racket? Uh, and so the first thing I said is, how much weight and where do you want me to add the weight? And this customer did not know the answer to that. So I thought it'd be kind of a fun and educational video to talk about how much weight to add. Obviously, like everything with tennis, um, your game's gonna be different than everybody else's, so trust yourself. But how much weight to add, where do you wanna add the weight? And let's just talk a little bit about that. So in this case, just for fun, I'm going to be adding 10 grams. And in this case, I'm not gonna actually be adding the weight. In the real life scenario, you're gonna be adding usually lead tape, sometimes tungsten and sometimes copper. Uh, I'm hearing more and more, but most of the time it's gonna be a lead weight or sometimes silicone in the handle or um, yeah, silicone in the handle, but sometimes you can put lead under the handle as well. That's what I usually do. Uh, but usually when we're talking about weight, uh, we're talking about lead tape most of the time. In this case, I have, um, I think this is called FunTac. I got it on Amazon. I've heard it called BlueTac before. Um, and I just, it's like Play-Doh. I just measured out 10 grams on this, uh, on this uh, <laughs> FunTac. So two, uh, 10 grams to this racket. And I measured this out before I wrote it down. This ble a Blade V8 right now is measuring at 324.7 grams. So if I add this amount of weight, we're at 334.7 grams. I know it's a little bit tough to see uh, uh, with the camera there, but 334.7. And then the swing weight right now, So 324 is our swing weight. This is strung, but uh, no additional weight added. There is an overgrip to the racket. And then I also did the balance. I'm not gonna do that here, but it's actually very important in tennis. So the strung balance I, I got was 32.9 centimeters. I know the uh, point system, like I think uh, one point is one eighth of an inch. Uh, so if someone says a racket's four points head light, which I think this one is, don't quote me, but this one should be head light. Um, but the metric system to me, at least with customizing, seems to work better. Uh, so it's 32.9 centimeters. Uh, headlight right now. So this is just kind of your standard, no weight added, just strong overgrip, ready to go. This person wants 10 grams. So let's talk about what this means. So as far as adding the 10 grams, we obviously make it heavier uh, by adding the 10 grams. But if I wanted to increase the swing weight the most, I would put it this 10 grams at 12 o'clock. So I put this kind of fun tack here at 12 o'clock. Now, according to the sheet, it'll probably increase the swing weight by around 35 points, which is pretty substantial. So remember we had a 324 swing weight before. So we're, our swing weight now is 359. So it's at 10 grams added all to the 12 o'clock position is really gonna increase the swing weight. And I'm not gonna do the balance now, but I could measure out the balance and it's no longer gonna be 32.9 centimeters. Um, 
if we have a racket that's perfectly evenly balanced, it's going to be around 34.3 centimeters uh, balanced. Let's see, according to this, by adding the 10 grams to the 12, we're going to increase the balance by 10 millimeters or one centimeter. So we're going to get very close to um, an evenly balanced racket. So if it goes from 33 to 34, yeah, we're getting very close to an evenly balanced racket by adding this 10 grams to the 12 o'clock position. So now we have a higher swing weight. We have a racket that's more evenly balanced. What does that do for us? So by adding 10 grams to it, the good thing about it is our power level is gonna go up uh, quite a bit. All else equal, a heavier racket. Uh, the, obviously when you're swinging a tennis racket, we're usually using pendulum physics to accelerate the racket head. Obviously, if you're hitting a forehand, this part of the racket's gonna be moving much slower than this part. By adding more mass to the end of the racket, you're increasing the power by the most. So if this customer said, all I care about is power generation, I want more power to the racket, 12 o'clock, that higher swing weight uh, is the way to go. Now, if they wanted the balance to be the same, one thing we could do is add the same amount of 10 grams underneath the grip to keep the balance the same. The overall weight, obviously if we're adding weight on both sides, the overall weight of the racket is gonna be increased, uh, but it would keep it more, uh, the balance of the racket the same. So increase power by going to 12 o'clock. A downside of putting the weight at 12 o'clock is maneuverability. So say you play doubles or say you're, you spend a lot of time at the net, this may not be the best thing for you because by putting that weight at 12, it may be hard to maneuver this amount of rack, uh, this much weight at the 12 o'clock position. So that is definitely a downside of putting the weight here. The other end of the spectrum, let's say it's the same 10 grams, so we would still have the same racket. Um, so let's say we put it, the 10 grams, let's say I hit un under the grip right here. Yeah, C324. So, fun fact, at least I find it interesting, <laughs> we're adding the same amount of weight, but the swing weight's gonna feel the same. So, if I hit 10 grams of lead under the grip, the swing weight would feel the same, which means the racket itself, how heavy the racket feels, would feel the exact same. So, the swing weight would be the same, yet the racket, in this case, Let's kind of go the other end of things. The racket would be more maneuverable. Um, so the swing weight's unchanged, the racket added 10 grams, but the racket would be more maneuverable. The reason is having this much weight, it's actually gonna feel a little bit lighter because this weight is gonna allow yourself at the bottom, this racket's gonna feel a little bit lighter, a little bit more maneuverable by putting the weight uh, underneath the handle. Keep in mind, we are, by putting the weight down here, we are lowering the um, balance point of the racket. So if we were at 32.9 centimeters and we put 10 grams underneath the butt cap of the racket, according to the Unstrung Custom chart, we'd be lowering the balance point by one, 10 millimeters or, or one centimeter. Um, so that actually is really gonna affect the balance of the racket, which is important. So good for maneuverability if you spend a lot of time at the net, I would say and um, downside is power. It basically lowers uh, the overall power feeling. Everything is all else equal. The last thing I'll say on this, if someone wanted, let's say, um, more stability at the contact point, three and nine is a great place to add weight. So let me just in half here, try to get close to five grams each. What we're doing, we're increasing the stability of the racket we are slightly increasing the balance point because if a 27 inch racket is 13 and a half is the halfway point, we are adding more weight above that. So we are making it slightly more head heavy, not as head heavy as we would if we put the weight at 12, but this is stability. So it's not gonna be as powerful as 12, but it's actually going to give you a little bit more stability at contact. So let's see at three and nine, what our swing weight is. So 345 swing weight. So you can see how all of these things are connected. Again, we're, it's gonna be a little bit uh, less maneuverable because we're adding more weight up here without adding additional weight to the grip handle. 
Um, so it's gonna be a little less maneuverable, but a little bit more stability because you're gonna have more mass at contact. The last thing I'll say is sometimes when we add weight to the rack, and one thing I see is sometimes people will add weight at the 13 and a half inch mark if it's a standard 27 inch racket. Um, one thing I've learned from Unstrung Customs and from stringing uh, and customizing myself, I'm not a huge fan of that. I, I know it sounds good in theory because you're adding mass to the racket without affecting the balance point because you're putting it at the halfway point. The downside of that is that's kind of a point of the racket, in my view, that doesn't do a lot of work. If I'm adding additional weight or customizing a racket, I want it to be at places where it matters, at the contact point for stability, at 12. And then if I want to keep the balance the same, maybe I'll hide some weight underneath uh, the grip to make sure the balance stays the same. So to me, rather than add at the halfway point, I'd much rather add weight um, to the racket and you can just add like say four and one fourth inch tape along the sides, uh, add weight uh, there and then hide some under the grip. Uh, that way, in my view, that's actually doing a lot more work um, than just putting weight say on the throat of the racket, which I, I've seen from time to time if it works for you, great. Uh, but for me, and, and from what I've learned in my experience, mass at the contact point of the string bed or uh, underneath the handle for maneuverability, uh, that's probably a better way to, uh, to add weight in my view. These are all fun things to think about when you're talking about tennis rackets, the connection between the weight, swing weight, and the balance. This has been Drew from Frisco Tennis Shop, and I hope to talk soon.